Hey everyone, it's Mafalda and this is my May wrap up. So before I begin this video, I just want to say that in my description, I will be leaving a lot of useful links for not only the Black Lives Matter website where you can donate money and also sign some petitions, but also some threads on Twitter that I've been seeing circulating that have a lot of petitions that aren't getting as much attention as other ones and still need a lot of signatures. And it literally takes a few seconds just to sign a petition, so sign as many petitions as possible. I'll also be leaving the link to those videos that if you're not able to donate, you can just put the video uh, just playing with the ads on and all the monetization from those videos are going to the Black Lives Matter movement and other organizations that need uh, money right now. So if you're not able to donate through your money, just play those videos with the ads on. And I think for those videos to work multiple times, you have to uh, after watching that video, watch a couple other videos, like three or five videos, I think, and then go back to that original video and just play it as you would, and it will work again, and the monetization of the ads will work again. Just play that video as much as you can, because I've been seeing that it has been raising a lot of money uh, for a lot of organizations, and it's great because I know that a lot of people don't have the means to donate right now because of uh, COVID and unemployment and all of that. And lastly, I will also be linking down below some videos from black booktubers who have been talking about their experience being black on booktube. And I think it's a very good learning experience for us uh, white people. And I forgot to mention, but I will also be leaving other videos by black booktubers talking about books that you can read and just generally other stuff about this topic or just other videos by them because they're amazing and honestly i feel very ashamed that some of them i only found out like this month uh so yeah please check them out they're all in the description and just a last quick note that i want to make is that even though we're seeing less and less stuff about this topic not only online but also on mainstream media it doesn't mean that it's suddenly resolved we still have a lot of work to do and i just want to urge you all to continue doing your part educating yourself um retweeting stuff reposting stuff we need to try and keep the same energy that we had last week and we need to keep educating ourselves so yeah, and that's it. And now moving on to the video. So this month I managed to read 10 books, which was great. Uh, a little bit less than the previous month, but it's still a great number and I'm very happy with it. I read six physical books, which was really great. I usually, I think I read more audiobooks than physical books. Not sure. Um, but yeah, I read six physical books and four audiobooks. And also I DNF'd two books and I'm not going to count them for my Goodreads challenge. That's why I said that I read 10 books and there were other two books that I didn't finish and that I ended up DNFing. Um, one of them was such a disappointment for me. I just wasn't feeling the story. These were both on audiobook and the first one was only mostly devastated. I am still heartbroken that I didn't finish that book. When I heard that there was going to be a Grease retelling with a male-male relationship, it just seemed so fucking good. And then I started reading it and honestly I just wasn't feeling it at all and I feel like the book was uh, focusing a lot on family relationships and uh, if you know Grease, if you've watched Grease, it has nothing to do with their family, it doesn't even talk about their family, so I noticed the resemblances with the movie, but I still, I don't know, I just feel like it was straining f too far away from the movie and I wasn't liking it and I wasn't invested and I was mixing up characters all the time, so at like 30% of the book I just gave up basically. <laughs> and the second book that I DNF'd, I, it was one of those books that it was the last thing available on script and I started listening to it and I just wasn't feeling it and even though I want to read more books by this author, I think this is not the one to start with. And it was Dark and Deepest Red by Anne-Marie Macklemore. Um, and yeah, I just, I didn't know what the book was about going into it and then I was very confused, so it like, 30% I think also, I just DNF'd it and I, yeah, that's it. I want to read other books by this author, 
but maybe this is not the one for me. Even though it involves like historical fiction and all, I just wasn't feeling the audiobook as well, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't count DNFs for my Goodreads challenge, also because I don't DNF books that often. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the books that I did read this month. So the first book that I read this month, I read it on audiobook, and it was Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami, and I love Murakami's work. I think I've only read five books of his until now, but I absolutely love his writing, and uh, just the stories that he puts together are so imaginative, but also simple, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, because I think if you told me uh, the plot of this book, for example, I would say, okay, that's a very like simple, nice story, but then his writing and the way he tells the story just elevates the book uh, a step further, and it just becomes this elaborate uh, narrative, and I love that. So this book is told through Kei's perspective, who is a guy who is in love with his best friend called Sumire, and, but Sumire is in love with an older woman and it follows their relationship and their friendship and one day Kei receives a phone call that Sumire has disappeared in Greece and then Kei and Sumire's love interest, who is called Miu, uh, need to come together to find Sumire and this book is kind of like a thriller to find Sumire and to know what happened to her and uh, it just deals a lot with relationships uh, a lot of Murakami's work deals a lot with relationships and love relationships and friendships and one thing that I love about Murakami's work is that I always relate a lot with his characters because they're always very like lonely and artistic and just very like in their heads and I just always relate a lot with his characters and I feel like that's not a good thing to be honest uh, but it just happens, I don't know but yeah, this was a very quick read I really like the queer rep in this book because Tsumere is in a relationship with a woman and I really wasn't expecting that I think I haven't read a Murakami which had a female-female relationship I might be wrong, but I don't think so, and I really like that, I really like how thrilling it was, I really like the little magical realism uh, details in the story. It doesn't have a lot of magical realism compared to other books of him, but I still really liked it, and I ended up giving Sputnik's Sweetheart 4 out of 5 stars. Then the next three books that I read this month, I wasn't planning on reading the three books, uh, but I read the whole Hunger Games trilogy this month. I was only planning on reading the first one, but uh, they are just so fast to read and so exciting that I had to read the whole trilogy and that's what I did. I do have a vlog where I read the first Hunger Games. I will put a card up here uh, and I was planning on doing vlogs for the other books, but I just ended up not having the motivation to do them, uh, I don't know. But yeah, I don't think uh, any dystopian trilogy will ever come close to this trilogy, and I really get why I love these books as much as I did. Uh, back when I was a teenager, I really lived for this trilogy, and I get why that is, because it's a really great trilogy. I absolutely loved the three books, but I will say that my favorite is always catching fire, then it's The Hunger Games and then it's Mockingjay. Mockingjay I feel like it's a bit weaker compared to the other two books because in the first two books I always ended a chapter thinking okay I need to read the next one because I need to know what happens. It always ends with like the perfect cliffhanger that just makes me want to read more and I completely flew through the first two books and then in the third one I was kind of losing interest a bit uh, but it's still like a f solid four stars and then the first one is like 4.5 and the second one is a five stars. Um, I don't think I need to explain the plot of these books because everyone has heard about these books, but um, yeah, these are great. A great place to start with dystopian YA fiction, and since I've reread these books, I've also re-watched the movies, and they're still amazing, and honestly one of the best adaptations of like YA books I've seen, um, even better than Harry Potter in my opinion. Also another thing that I want to mention is that uh, last month a lot of people 
reread these books and I saw a vlog by Lena Norms. She is one of my favorite YouTubers ever and she did a vlog where she read these books again and she also did a vlog for the new Hunger Games book but I still haven't read that one so yeah. And I will be linking that video down below because she makes some great points that I could never like think of and articulate so I'll just leave the link to her vlog down below or in the cards somewhere and please watch that vlog it's so entertaining I absolutely love her and she just makes some great analogies with all of the details in the books and it's great please watch it. Uh, but yeah, I read these three books this month um, and like I said, it's 4.554 and they're still as great as I remembered and I'm happy for that. <laughs> then the next book that I read this month was also by Aroki Murakami and it was What I Talk About When I Talk About Running. This is a non-fiction book about running and it's a collection of like little things that he wrote about running all throughout like two or three years and honestly this might be kind of an exaggeration I don't know but uh, I feel like this is one of the best nonfiction books that I've read in a while but like if he told me that I would be reading a nonfiction book about running I wouldn't say that I would like it that much I just wouldn't assume that I would enjoy it uh, but it's just such an enjoyable book. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because I do run in my free time and uh, also Murakami is just such an engaging writer. Even if you wrote about trash I would still like it because his writing is that good. Uh, but I just really enjoyed this book and it was such an enjoyable experience that honestly I would listen to it again right now I wouldn't mind it. But yeah, this book is just about his experiences running. He runs a lot, a lot more than I do, obviously. Um, but he just gave me a lot of motivation to run more. And he also gave me a lot of motivation to write more because he also talks about like the comparisons between running and writing. And yeah, I don't know what it was about this book. Maybe it's because I connected with it, but I just really enjoyed this book. And it was such a quick read and I, all, I didn't read it while I was running because when I run I just can't can concentrate on anything but I did listen to this while I was out and about like on walks and stuff and I I don't know I just really like this book and I would recommend it to everyone even if you don't like running I feel like you're still going to enjoy this book uh, also I'm just gonna say this uh, if you haven't read any of Mur Murakami's work please do he's an amazing writer and I feel like I don't see a lot of people talking about him on booktube uh, please read at least Kafka on the Shore. It's just everyone needs to read that book. It's just so good and um, yeah. But I rated what I talk about when I talk about running 4.5 out of 5 stars. Then the next book that I read this month was Blood Water Paint by Joe McCulloch. Um, this book is about a female painter. I've talked about this book a lot on my channel. This book talks about a female painter from the 1600s who is called Artemisia Gentileschi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. Um, but I only found out that this was a real story by the end of the book when I saw that Artemisia was really a painter that existed in history. So yeah, this is about real life events and it's about Artemisia putting her rapist in trial. This is such a powerful story. Um, also, it's a very quick read because it's all written in poetry. She has a very powerful and uh, engaging writing style and I feel like if you don't like Rupi Kaur's type of poetry you won't like this type of poetry because this is not the type of poetry that rhymes always it's just like kind of like what is it called kind of like slam poetry I guess I don't know if it has an audiobook but if it does have an audiobook I feel like it would work really well in that format um, because sometimes I, I, I'm not a poet obviously and sometimes I would try to read it like um, in the way that they read in slam poetry and I wouldn't be able to but yeah this is mostly written in poetry but it also has some chapters in between 
where it's like her mother speaking to her and telling her stories and it's in like normal text format. I don't know what you will call it, prose. But this was such an interesting book. I really recommend it, especially if you like history. But this was a very interesting book. I obviously didn't know about Artemisia's story and I'm so glad that I read this book and now I know and I've since researched more about her and she was such an amazing painter uh, in the 1600s in Rome and I didn't even know about her. It's just crazy. But yeah, this was very emotional, powerful, important and just very engaging and I ended up giving Blood Water Paint 4 out of 5 stars. Then the next book that I read this month was on audiobook and it was Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire and I kind of didn't like this book. I just guess it wasn't what I was expecting from the book. And this book is a fantasy story about children who um, one day go through doors that lead them into magical places and um, all of the places are different for every children and when they come back they kind of are changed and they're kind of traumatized and then they go to Eleanor West's home for wayward children where all of these children that are traumatized um, learn to be in the real world I guess again uh, that's kind of like the plot overall of the book and in this book we follow Nancy as she goes to uh, Eleanor's West home of wayward children and then some strange things start to happen and this is what I didn't know about this book I thought that these books followed the children while they were in those magical places and when I started reading it and I figured out that it wasn't about that and it was about the after uh, experience and it just we just got glimpses of those magical places that they were in I just was very disappointed. So I guess it was my mistake that I didn't research more about this book uh, because I really thought that it was going to follow one of the children that went into a magical place and then it was their adventures there. But it's not about that. It's about the aftermath of going into those places. And I just... I didn't care, I guess, because it didn't meet my expectations, so I just didn't care. And um, I, guess, I guess it was kind of a miss for me, but it was also my uh, mistake, so yeah, I get what I pay for. And uh, next time I'll research more about the book instead of just hearing about it. And if you've read the rest of the books, please tell me if the rest of the books are also about the aftermath and just following the events of this book. Because if there is one of the books, because I know that these books don't have to be like all read, you can just like read the ones you want. Uh, I guess uh, because they don't have a continuation, but if one of these books just talks about the experiences of the children in that magical place that they go in, um, please tell me because that would be a lot more interesting than following a group of children in like a school. I just don't like that. So I ended up giving Every Heart a Doorway 3 out of 5 stars. Then the next book that I read this month was honestly apart from The Hunger Games, was my favorite of the month and it was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I think this book came out in May and uh, when I saw it on script I was so excited. I absolutely love her books. I've read all three and I don't know if this one is my favorite. I'm kind of unsure between this one and The Poet X, uh, but I feel like this one is my favorite out of all the three. I just I can't stop thinking about this book. I would actually just reread it now, honestly. So this book follows Camino, who lives in the Dominican Republic, and Yahaira, who lives in New York, and uh, they don't know about each other's existence until their father dies in a plane crash, and then they found out that they are sisters, and uh, it's about them coming together dealing with grief and about like families and relationships and it's just amazing. I couldn't recommend it more and also I couldn't recommend the audiobook more. I love Elizabeth Acevedo's voice. She's just the best narrator ever. I feel like she could narrate every single book and it would be flawless and uh, I just really really like the story. I teared up like every 
two seconds, honestly. It was beautiful. And I feel like Elizabeth Acevedo is just getting better and better uh, with her storytelling. And honestly, I have nothing else to say. It's a beautiful story. It's very emotional. Uh, it also has a female-female relationship. And it's just amazing. It was perfect. I, don't, I have nothing to say. Like, when I don't like a book, I could talk about it for hours, but when I love a book, I have nothing to say. So, yeah, that was it. I gave Clap When You Land 5 out of 5 stars, and it's one, honestly one of my favorite books of the year already. Then the next book that I read this month was Miles To Go by Miley Cyrus. I did a long ass fucking vlog about this book, so I'm not gonna talk about it a lot. Uh, but yeah, this was fun to experience this again. I still really like Miley, so I don't know. This was fun, I guess. I gave it like three stars. Um, it's not anything special, uh, but for what it is and for the time it was written, it's not that bad. So yeah, three out of five stars. And then the last book that I read this month was 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I was really uh, hesitant to pick this book up because I know that a lot of people love it and it's just a modern classic, I guess. This story doesn't really have a plot, I guess. It just follows a family all throughout like five or six generations, the Buendia family. And what I have to say about this is if you don't like character-driven stories, don't read this book. If you're like really plot-driven, you're not gonna like this because this doesn't have a plot. The plot is following the characters and the families and the relationships. And I thankfully am very character-driven. Uh, the story can have nothing interesting to say, but if the characters are well-constructed and uh, just interesting, I will like the story. And that's what happened with this book. I really enjoy that because I personally am very character driven so so I really found this story very interesting so I really enjoyed this book I thought the characters were very well constructed and one thing that my boyfriend told me because he has already read this book and he didn't like it because he's very plot driven is that all of the characters have um, kind of the same names uh, all throughout the generations just like with little things differentiating the characters and I admit that that can be a bit confusing but thankfully my edition of this book has a family tree at the beginning of the book so it has all of the names and I can differentiate all of the characters because of this but also this family tree um, kind of spoiled me also because I'm very nosy and I was always checking the family tree and then I would be like oh he's marrying her I didn't know that, but now I know because of the family tree, so it kind of spoiled me a bit, little bit. But also I feel like it's very important to follow the story and to really know who the characters are and who are they talking about. And, uh, but yeah, it spoiled me a bit, so I don't like to be spoiled. And one thing that I absolutely loved about this book was Gabriel Garcia Marquez's writing. His writing is impeccable and I just love how he shifted from perspective so fluidly. I don't know if that's a word. Uh, it was just so fluid the way that he shifted perspectives between characters. Um, it was just like a really well-constructed story, but I feel like he really took his time to uh, construct the narrative and um, work out all of the details and uh, yeah. And I feel like a story like this, just following a family uh, through like f almost 400 pages can be boring, but this was not. This was very interesting, so I give a lot of that to his writing and his storytelling. So I gave 100 Years of Solitude 4 out of 5 stars. Also because, even though I really liked it, I am never going to reread this book. Uh, so that kind of uh, makes me want to give it a little bit less. Uh, because of that. So so yeah, these were the 10 books that I read this month. This is the physical pile. Also, I didn't read one of the books that I had put on my TBR. I just didn't have time to get to it, but I read a bunch of other books, so I'm not going to uh, punish myself because of that. So I don't really feel bad. It was an Agatha Christie book. I will eventually get to it. Also because in my TBR I was only planning on reading the first Hunger Games book and I ended up reading the whole trilogy. So yeah, 
I, it was still a great reading month and honestly I just feel like June is not going to be a very great reading month and uh, yeah I'm so happy that I'm filming again I haven't filmed a video in too long honestly and I miss you guys and and another thing that I want to say is thank you because I have been hitting so many milestones in the past weeks like last week I hit not only 600 subscribers but also 650 subscribers so in like a week I gained like 70 subscribers or something and it was crazy and I don't know where these people are coming from but I'm so thankful and I'm almost right now I'm almost at 700 subscribers and I'm just getting so close to 1000 and a thousand people is a lot and I just can't deal with all of this but I'm very grateful and I'm very happy that people are enjoying my content and I just want to say thank you. So yeah, don't forget to check all of the links in my description, continue to sign petitions, continue to educate yourself and uh, spread the word and spread information uh, about Black Lives Matter and all of that. And I will see you on my next video. Bye!